Wizard 101, the childhood game that everyone remembers. An easy game where you make friends, choose spells, fight bosses. But what if it was so difficult that everything was agony? That's what I'm gonna find out. In this series, I'll be level locking my wizard so I can't level up past level one. This is going to be a five part series, a video for each of the first five worlds in order to defeat Malastare as a level one. So feel free to subscribe, don't miss out on any of the parts, and let's go. Starting this series off, I had to make a new wizard, and honestly, I didn't know what school I was fully going for. I had a few in mind, but eventually, I chose death. The main reason why I ended up choosing death is because I didn't have a death wizard on my account at this point. And also, as you'll see in later episodes, death gets a lot of really good powers from this challenge that other schools just don't get. Also, I had to make my wizard as goth as possible because she's death, and my discord and I, we ended up on the name Vanessa Crowcaller. And at this point, the series starts. So after completing the extremely long tutorial, we finally get our first quest, and we're off to start Unicorn Way. So it's at this point, after making my wizard, is where I finally hit that level lock button. It's the, it's the final lock-in, and this is actually where the series fully starts. So as I'm doing some of the most basic and most introductory quests in the game, I guess I'll, I'll explain some of the rules of this challenge. Firstly, I I'm level one, I'm level locked. I can't level up past level one, and it's gonna stay there for a very long time. The second sort of rule that I implemented is I can't use anything from other wizards for at least the first world. Because this challenge would basically be impossible otherwise, I'm gonna need some pay to win and some crowns gear later on, but for now, I wanna, I wanna avoid that. So as you'll see in the later episodes, as I get to other worlds, I allow myself to get like a, a little bit of an extra boost uh, because I'm gonna need the help as, as I go. It's gonna get tough. And the final most important rule is that everything has to be solo. I can't allow help from other players. The only thing I can get from other players would be treasure cards. But for the most part, I will not add anybody on this account. And with all of that being said, we've done all the quests and we're up to our first boss, which is Rattlebones. Going into this, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. Although it is the first boss, I have nothing. I have limited health, limited mana, and I'm going to fizzle a lot. As you can see, I end up taking a ton of hits. I just get completely berated by both of them, and I fizzle. On this fight, it is the first of many. The strategy here is to just completely take out one of them to make it a 1v1, which is just gonna mitigate a lot of the damage that I'm taking. Hence, which is why I'm trying to use Storm Snake on the fairy. She's the weaker of the two and the easier one to kill. Luckily for me, the second Storm Snake, I do power, but unluckily for me, it hits the low end and doesn't kill the fairy. So at this point, I am completely panicking. I am at half health, and the, and the fairy is not dead, and things are just going very, very poorly for me. So by my third hit, I finally kill the fairy, but at this point I'm at 169 health, which this is terrible. I decide to heal because instead of trying to hit twice, if I fizzle once, there's a really good chance that I die. So I got a dark spread, I got a fire cat. Oh, I, it doesn't matter how much damage they do because they will end up killing no matter what. I just need to not fizzle. Luckily for me, I fizzle. Rattlebones gets a terrible fizzle on whatever storm spell that was, and I get to power my fire cat. And boom, he is almost dead, and I am feeling great. I have 332 health, all I need is to not fizzle, and we're in the clear. He sends a spray, and it does literally nothing. It's, it's irrelevant. And I fizzle again. At this point in the battle, I am starting to get a little bit nervous, because although unlikely, if I fizzle four more times in a row, I lose, and that sucks. But... I finally get the fairy off, and Rattlebones is defeated. The first boss of the entire walkthrough is dead, and I feel great. As you can see by the drops, I even got a Myth Sprite pet, which is kind of a rare drop, and kind of nice to have, have some company for this, because it's gonna get rough, and I need someone to put the blame on. So I walk out of the tower with pride, and I take it right over to Saren Nightchant, and I am about to be done with Unicorn Way. I finish a long train of quests and finally get my first spell, which is Death Trap. And just a few quests later, I get Pixie. I take my two new spells to the shopping district and the bazaar to get some brand new gear to prepare for the final sections of the world. Also good to mention here, I got a really good pet from the loyalty store, and it kind of doesn't go against my rules, so I use it. Our next order of business is defeating this old ghoul in a tower and talking to some pets. It is not interesting, so th that's it. 
The rest of Wizard City was all live streamed on my Twitch channel. If you'd like to catch the walkthrough live, the link is in the description. Anyways, my chat voted on completing Triton Avenue first, which went as follows. Killing one, two, three haunted minions, talking to Arthur Griffinbane, and then Duncan Grimwater. Since these two babies aren't strong enough to kill a fish and collect their sister's lost wand, they make me do it instead. I killed the fish, grabbed the wand, took it back to the goofy death wizard, once again because they're too scared to fight some people on their own, and they make me do it and I gotta defeat some rotten fodders to collect some storm master amulets so Duncan can cast his spell. The rotting fodders are of no issue, I, I killed each of them, collected the master amulets and returned them to Duncan. Next we gotta do some stuff with the leader of the pack watch, Vlad Raven Eye. gotta grab some cogs, kill some scarlet screamers, get a coil, return them, which I do. We get the mill up and running, Duncan casts a spell, and the children once again make me do all the hard work and defeat the Harvest Lord. This fight was not going to be easy. Although I have slightly better gear since Rattlebones, these are much stronger enemies. The only other real advantage I have is Pixie. The fight goes on as expected. Lots and lots of fizzling, and I'm taking lots and lots of damage. And although I have extra heals to prepare for this damage that I'm taking, I don't have a lot of mana. And even the slightest fizzle increases my odds of losing by tenfold. Strategy here is the same as Rattlebones. I take out the weaker enemy first, close it down into 1v1, and slowly lower my enemy's health. The Harvest Lord is tricky though, because he is Fire Elf, and Fire Elf is the strongest 2 pip spell. Uh, it does the most damage, and although it's over time, it is a strong spell. The fight goes on, and honestly, since I have Pixie, it's not that tricky. The only real issue that I come across is my mana, and as you can see, I end up killing the Harvest Lord with one mana left. I finish up the remaining quests in Triton Avenue, and we're on our way to Firecat Alley. Firecat Alley is once again really, really easy. Because at this point in the game, every single fight is a 1v1, I don't really have any issues. Most of the cards that I have just do plenty damage and nothing, nothing's an issue. So we start off by defeating some haunted minions, talking to some people. <gasps> Lizzo! Hello! Lizzo! Hello, why are you here? Fighting some fire elves, talking to some more people doing some chores, fighting some magma men, and then I gotta fight this really weird looking banshee, and after that, I get to fight Alicane Swift Arrow. This fight is gonna suck. The minion in this fight, the magma man, has some of the highest health on a minion in Wizard City. If that isn't bad enough, both Alicane Swift Arrow and the magma man have Sunbird in their deck. Not to mention that most of their hits do 100 damage per pip. This easily means that I could die within turns if I'm not careful. In order to try and keep myself alive for the longest, I knew I had to take out the Magma Man. Alongside him also having Sunbird, he has Fire Elf, and I needed to get rid of that. So I hit him with a really strong Thunder Snake, and then I managed to hit him a second time in a row, and he dies. I hit High End on both my hits, and he's out of here. At this point in the fight, I am not worried one bit, because I have plenty of heals, I have plenty of mana, and it's gonna be an easy fight. The biggest issue that can arise though is Sunbird is still a big issue. And if I don't watch my pips carefully or I fizzle or whatever it is, I can still lose very easily. Luckily for me, Alakane is just not sending the Sunbird. He's not doing any of his big hits. He does unfortunately land a Flame Snake, which hits high end. Right here in the fight, you can see I pass. That's mainly because if I sent a hit, I wouldn't be able to heal right out of it. I'm always on the edge of my seat waiting for the Sunbird this fight, so I'm always going to make sure I can heal if I need to. Here, he sends his 300 damage move, and this one's terrible. That does 100 damage per pip, and that's exactly what I was afraid of. Right here, if I start fizzling like crazy, it could be completely over for me, but luckily I power the snake, and things are looking very, very well for me. At this point in the fight, I just had to YOLO it with an imp. I had a 5% chance to fizzle, and if I did fizzle, I would have probably lost, but I power it, and Alicane Swift Arrow is dead. So we finish up our quests, and it's time to move on to Cyclops Lane. Cyclops Lane is infamously the most boring part of Wizard City. The enemies are very easy, they have no health and do no damage. It forces you to go into the dark cave to do some quests, freeing these wizards stuck in balls. I don't know what this has to do with the story, but we, we have to help them. And of course, you have to do laundry for Professor Drake. Oh no, not the laundry. Which is the worst quest in all of Wizard 101. Quite honestly, Cyclops Lane sucks. After all that, the only thing left to do is defeat a Warhorn, 
get a key, and then defeat the final boss. That's it, and then you're done. They are not challenging fights, and just stupidly easy. I hate, I hate this place. But with that being said, we're done with Cyclops Lane. The only challenges left for us are Falgaze and Lord Nightshade, and then we're completely done with Wizard City. Unfortunately for us, there wasn't much more we could do to prepare for the next two fights. Because of my self-imposed rules, I'm not allowed to get any good gear until we're in Krakatopia, so we're stuck with terrible stats. But we pick up what we have, and we take our way to Safra Tower to defeat Falgaze, and it's gonna suck. Falgaze is luckily the easier boss fight of the final two. His minion is just a haunted minion which has a lot less health than every other minion in the game, so it works out. The plan of attack is once again, clear out the minion as fast as possible. I decided to use a dark sprite to guarantee that it's in kill range, so I can basically kill it with anything else. And seeing that he just has 20 health, I know that another dark sprite simply kills. The reason I use dark sprite instead of imp is because Falgaze is a death boss, and I don't want to be using death spells against a death boss. Once the haunted minion is dead, I know I'm in a really good spot. Although I have just above half my health, I know it's going to be an easy fight. The biggest issue, of course, is that my death hits are just doing a lot less damage, but it's okay. It's going to be alright. Falgaze hits a terrible fizzle, and I'm feeling fantastic. I've got all the hits I could ever need, including two Thunder Snakes, and I have all the heals I could ever need, so I know it's going to be a complete piece of cake. The reason I heal here is because Falgaze can Banshee, and if he Banshees when I have a trap on me, I would die. The rest of the fight from here on out is pretty simple. It's just hitting and healing and making sure I don't lose. Right here we do see the Banshee from Falgaze, and it takes me to 20 health. The closest I've been to dying the entire series. Luckily, all it takes is a few heals and just managing some hits. After eating a whole Fire Elf and a whole Snow Serpent, Falgaze eventually dies to the Thunder Snake, and that leaves us with one boss of Wizard City left. There was nothing I could do to properly prepare for this fight. Lord Nightshade was easily going to be my most difficult challenge yet. Me and my measly 502 health is... it's not gonna work! I went into this fight fully prepared to die, not once, but multiple times. And also, since I'm a death wizard, my death traps and dark sprites are gonna do nothing against Lord Nightshade. And that was only going to hurt me. Now let's talk about the enemies. Lord Nightshade has 690 health, the highest of any enemy we've seen yet. The cards in his deck are pretty tame, except for the Banshee and the Fire Elf. Those two are the biggest hurdles in this fight. But if I'm gonna be honest, the Field Guard is way more of an issue than Lord Nightshade is. The Field Guard has 400 health, and since he's Storm, he is pure damage. His kit contains of Rain Beetle, Thunder Snake, Storm Serpent, Storm Elf, Lightning Bats, and Storm Shark. All of these hits are doing incredible amounts of damage to me, so I have to take him out. Luckily for me, the Field Guard is Storm, which means I can use my death hits perfectly fine. All I needed to kill him was a Banshee treasure card that I got from a previous fight and one of my death traps. Now unfortunately this didn't kill, but he didn't use any of his pips and the next round he was dead to a dark sprite. Meaning my biggest fear was gone without any complications. And now that it was just me and the Lord Nightshade, it was gonna be a piece of cake. I was sitting at 21 mana, I had all my heals, I had some amazing treasure cards like Weakness, I had my Fire Elf TC, I knew without a doubt I was not going to break a sweat for the rest of the fight. It was going to be easy. The biggest issue still standing in my way was his 690 health. That isn't necessarily an issue because of the health, it's just an issue because it's going to take me a while longer to kill him. And the longer that he's alive, the higher chance that I have of dying myself. I also got incredibly lucky during this fight. He he shied away from both his Banshee and his Fire Elf and kept on using Frost Beetle and Snow Serpent, which are his weakest two spells. Because of his weak hits and me not being in any relevant danger, I was able to land a Fire Elf. And this would just kill him over time. I felt great. I hit him with an Imp that was actually gonna boost for 20 more damage and a Lightning Bats from the pet that I got right at the start. And he was dead. He was, he's dead to the overtime, and it was really not a bad fight. I did pretty good. With Lord Nightshade dead, there was not much else to do. All we had to do was kill a field guard, talk to Merle Ambrose, unlock the death school, actually learn two new spells, Infection and Threefold Fever. We take our findings back to Merle Ambrose, where he gives us Sacrifice. Going forward, this will be our best heal. 
and we're pretty much on our way to Krakatopia, and that is Wizard City completed. And the very final thing we did before moving on to Krakatopia was grabbing a whole set of gear. That's right, baby, we're getting an upgrade. Some of the gear you can see right here, but most of that we'll go over in the second episode in the series. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I really hope you guys enjoy the future ones as well. If you have any ideas of strategies or techniques I could use later on, please let me know in the comments down below. And also, if you have any kind of feedback at all, any changes you want me to make to the series and type in the sort of editing type of type of means, let me know in the comments too. And also, if you want to watch the series live, it's all on my Twitch channel. The link is in the description. But with that being said, this is episode one, finally complete, and I hope to see you guys in the next.